divided by a curtain, therefore we are not sorrowful. If we weep, it is because we cannot share your joys and because we no longer know your touch. O everlasting Kohar, take this man of goodness into your eternal embrace. Let your life become his life and your breath his breath. He is your own. He is the drop returning to the filled pitcher, the leaf returning to the tree. You are the repository of his incarnations. As you grew there, so he grew here. You are everlastingly whole and he lives in you. If he is not even as you in faith, let him enter, hide his faults, for they are not many. For this you were fashioned, for this you came into being. You are the overbody awaiting the returning spirit, and the spirit now comes. You are that which will close the newly arrived spirit in heavenly flesh. You are that in which our departed one will express himself. O Koha, hear us. Here is your vitalizing essence. Before you were incomplete, now you are whole. Draw your own, your compatible one to you and observe the many likenesses. We send fragrances that they may spread around you. Now take the eye which will perfect your face. It is the perfecting eye, the eye which sees as they see, as they are. See the fluctuating race, is it not beautiful? Does it not come with an aura of fragrance, sweetness filling the air? It has been purged of all impurity. All about it is fragrant. Therefore grant it your substance that it may become solid and firm. O Koha, long have you awaited the day of fulfilment, the day of your destiny. That day is here, it is now. Therefore take the spirit which is your own and then fold it with your wings. Each to his own and to his own each go. You and he are bound together with unseverable bonds. Each without the other is nothing. Now bear him up, for in that place you are greater than he, for you are the generator. While he rested in the womb, you were active. As he grew, you grew before him. If he has done wrong, and who among men is guiltless, then in you let the wrong be adjusted. You are his hope, you are his shield, and you are his refuge. This we say to the brilliant one, the guardian of goodness, the departed one has not walked with ignorance. He has not been slothful in carrying the burden of his duty. He has not been swayed by passions of the body. He has not despoiled the house of another. He has not caused undue sorrow. Nor has he maltreated a child for pleasure. He has succoured the poor and the weak and has done all that is good. Therefore let none of those who lurk in darkness seize him. His radiant light is strong. Those who would seize him are repulsed by the light and slink away. He lives, he lives forever. He has lived worthily, he has been purified by the fire of earthly life. He has been refined in the furnace of tribulation. He has overcome all earthly temptations. He has lived a life which enhances goodness. He has prepared himself for life in the light. Receive him, O brilliant one. O Kohar, absorb into yourself the life force. It is meant for you, it is yours. It is the enlivening spirit which spans the two worlds. He, the departed one, was you, and even more so were you, he. Come to him as the beauteous one came to Belusus, a great king and gathered him in compassion and love. Come that he may awaken to new life in your arms. This man, the departed one, who in unity with you becomes the glorious one, was born of a god and is the child of two gods after the nature of greater men. Now you are impregnated with the living spirit of he 
who was prepared by trial on earth for you. Behold, in unity your twain are now throbbing with life, and your brightness bedazzles the eyes. You are now a star of life, a living star, and to a star you shall ascend to rule its life. The departed one is now freed, he is loosed from the bonds of illusion, he is saved from the dark waters of unreality, and he is one with the eternal light. These things we declare, so let them be. Our thoughts mould a new reality beyond the present real, and this becomes the reality of tomorrow. O great substantial Koha, protect this departed one your own from the accusations of false-fronted beings, remembering the faithful heart ever prevailing before the balances of our forefathers from far away. Put into his mouth those words which open doors. Let the goodness in him prevail. But you yourself stand up and bear witness for him. He suffered from the frailties of men. He was wrathful when provoked and surly when enduring great burdens. His temper flashed quickly when his words were not accepted or his ways followed, and at times he lacked consideration. However, these are small things inseparable from the frailties of mortal men, and in all greater things he was good. Let not the false-fronted one disguised in his brother's form possess him, guard him from the beings lurking in the shadows, this side of the darkness. I see this, my brothers. Behold, the departed one goes to meet his own image. It is his own self reflected in his image. It is his own self that comes to greet him. It is his koha which embraces him. It welcomes him as though he were one ransomed from captivity. I see them blend as he becomes a new seed in the heart of his koha. I hear the koha speak. It names itself Niva Koha. It says, O man of pure thoughts, of kindly words, of quiet speech, of good deeds, come to me, I am your being. Yet I am not you, as you have loved and cherished me, so I now love and cherish you. I am your reward, as I would have been your affliction. They are now united, and this is the being of the first threshold from whence the completed beings depart. The departed one now the departed one now stands in his own form and likeness. He becomes the great ship born voyager and passes over the waters to the place of reeds, but his weaknesses do not bear him down and he goes through. Great ones lift him up, let him not fall into the fetid waters of decay. He is a worthy son of Luz. Then the lesser is carried by the greater, while the dark ones gaze up from their misery and wait silently to see if he is born up. The glorious one goes past in peace, for he is not compatible with their dark company. He remains unmolested for flame, confound the hands of slime. An unloosed dark one comes up saying it will take this man but is repulsed by brightness. It is a thing of maimed rottenness. For on earth it was clothed in lust saturated flesh, though contained in a form of beauty. The heart of this man is not faint. See him now. Is he not sure of his welcome among beings of glory? He is as the wild bull, the prince of herds. He is a great one among the everlasting spirits. He reaches the firm ground where a bright being welcomes him and he is named the newcomer. He has landed on the shore and climbed the steps of splendor. He is in the company of shining spirits and his earth life companions greet him. They welcome him, saying, All this beauty and splendour is yours to enjoy. They bring garments of beauty, bright clothes of radiance. He has passed through the hall of judgment, the twin truths 
have heard his plea <coughs> and those who bore witness have departed. He has crossed the waters and ascended his steps. Now he has attained the threshold of immortality and stands in rapture. He has passed by the regions of darkness and gloom and is with glory. He comes to everlasting life in a true form of splendour to dwell evermore as a living spirit within his kohar. How wonderful is it to be united and one with the kohar. The newcomer looks back across the waters to the place of decision. Then he turns and ascends the steps to the threshold of immortality. He is in his true form, yet he is a spirit within his kohar. He speaks, but it is not the speech of men, and all understand him. His hearing is all-embracing. He sees both the powers of light and the powers of darkness, but the powers of darkness no longer affect him. The newcomer has reached his compatible abode. He has fought the battle which is mortal life and risen supreme to victory. He has not been vanquished by the raging ones, which are the bodily passions. At each step forward he has left a lifeless form. At each step he has fought a shadow. At each step he has won the clash of arms. The newcomer has sought out and discovered the one hidden behind the two and the three which stand before them. He knows the secrets of the nine which veil the others from the eyes of men. He has unravelled the skeins of life's mysteries, even as those enlightened ones yet living on earth must do. There is no suffering or pain in the newcomer. He cannot feel hurt, neither can he be sorrowful. If a companion of his earth journey be numbered among the dark ones, then his heart would soothe with forgetfulness, but later he will remember, and because of his efforts, the dark one will be returned to the crucible. Good. Well, doesn't sound like a place here. <laughs> I couldn't get into it. Hmm. Make any sense to you? Well, it's talking about the returning of a soul to his twin. Like death is the release of the soul on the earth and it returns to his twin, his image hmm. and his reward, which is the Kohar, and they become one. And the koha gives like a solid existence to the spirit. Back again, yeah. Must have to be. Well, that's, that's it. the way I was reading it was felt like uh, the ghost, the Holy Ghost, the resurrection of the soul attached to his physical body. Mm. Mm. Describing the place that is glorious. Pretty happy stuff, huh? Mm. Oh. 